Well, it wasn't quite the way we were all hoping for the season to end here in San Diego. This is what it looked like as the seconds ticked off the clock. Aztecs falling short to the Yukon Huskies 76 to 59 and last night's national championship game giving the Huskies their fifth national title. It's a 6 a.m. on your Tuesday morning. Many of you may be calling out of work because you stayed up late. We're here for you. We've got the yes. news. I'm Chris Grow <laughs> in for Eric Connor. And I'm Nettie e. Rapport. I know I want to go around and give yeah. Aztec fans hugs, give the players big hugs because it was rough. I mean, to see yeah. that loss. But you know what? It was an exciting season nonetheless. The season may not have ended with that title that we all wanted, but it was historic for the Aztecs. Yeah, and we have team coverage this morning covering all angles of last night's game both here and in Houston. CBS 8's Dan Marie McNichol is out at Viejas Arena with fan reaction. But first, we're going to check in with Eric Connard. So, Eric, you were at the game last night. I don't know if you got any sleep at all, but uh, obviously you heard from players and coaches firsthand. Uh, what was it like? Yeah, about four hours of sleep, but that's okay. We're still riding the energy because uh, this place was popping last night. 72,000 plus fans. A lot of them were Aztecs, so proud of their team regardless of the finish. You know, I heard a father and son walking out of the stadium here last night saying they never thought in their wildest dreams that the two of them would go to an NCAA championship together as father and son and that the Aztecs would be in it. So it's just a reminder of this uh, impressive historic run here. Let's get you some of the highlights of the game here. Uh, it really was uh, kind of in the hands of UConn for most of this. They had a 12 point lead uh, over most of this game in front of the 72,000 fans that were packed in here. Uh, we didn't get many lucky bounces at one point. Uh, they had an 11 uh, minutes without scoring a field goal and you just can't do that against a team like uh, UConn, as you guys mentioned, they have been to this dance quite a few times over the years, beating all of their opponents in this tournament by double digits. Uh, Aztecs had to really work for their points, while UConn's threes just seemed to drop with ease. At the half, UConn was up by 12. It seemed to be the gap for most of the game, but five minutes into the second half was our narrowest deficit of the night. We were down by just five points. Uh, we did get that three-pointer. We got a steal, added a layup, got to that uh, really, really close uh, five points, but UConn came back. Late game surge, put it out of hand. UConn winning this one 76-59. to We uh, want to hear from two seniors now with San Diego State Aztecs. We talked to them in the locker room after the game. Here's what they had to say. I mean, it's a blessing, you know, like, I feel like outside of this room, this is a closed locker room with us, we're the only team to believe we can get here. Um, so, I mean, we surpassed our expectations, honestly. Um, and so we were happy to be here, but obviously, you know, we wanted to win, but take this and, and we're going to get back in the gym and we're going to work to get back here. Well, this season has been a great comeback story. Uh, the 30-2 and two team, there's a lot of suspicion on what could have been there. Mm -hmm. uh, in the two years after, you know, losing the first round, I think what we did this, this season was to bring closure to those past seasons and, mm -hmm. you know, make everybody proud in San Diego and California everybody that supports us and you know you like you said you know it would have been nice to cap off with a win but hats off to you know UConn they're a really good team and we just didn't have what it took what an impressive run though hey coming up here at 6 30 we're gonna hear again from uh, coach Brian Dutcher and what he says about this historic run and also the shout out he gave to not only Aztecs fans that came here to Houston but the entire city of San Diego. We'll have that for you coming up here at 630. Guys, we'll send it back to you in the studio. Oh, yeah, San Diego yeah. is certainly rooting them on and still supporting them. Eric, thank you for that. And you know, the loss, of course, hurts. A lot of people waking up kind of sad this morning, but we are going to remember this great run. Yeah, CBS 8's Dan Marie McNichol joins us live from VA House Arena, where fans were celebrating, they were crying, they were probably even quiet at there at the end. But how are they reacting now to the loss, Dana Marie? Well, oh, Chris and Ned, I can tell you that this area right behind me near Viejas Arena was packed with thousands and thousands of students. And after that loss, I know, of course, it was tough. The shot kind of faded away. The message really quickly shifted to one of just how proud and excited they were for how far they've made it. This year, the culmination of all the effort of all the staff really came out. So this is heartbreaking, but we're going to learn. And this is the farthest we've ever gone. So how can you not love that? 
Absolutely. I mean, it is. It's a historic time for San Diego State. Now, take a look at some of this video. It was pretty much chaos before the game. The Viejas Arena, which holds 12,000 people, was at capacity before tip off. So students were attempting to rush the entrance, even jump over that fence to try and get a seat in that arena. Extra police was ready if anything got out of hand. About 40 to 60 police and law enforcement officers were seen in riot gear near campus just in case anything happened. But thankfully, no arrests were made. No incidents happened. Just a lot of, you know, sad fans heading out of that arena. There was supposed to be a block party planned yesterday, but actually ended up being canceled because of how immense the crowds were here. I mean, people, no matter where you were at a bar at your house, there were gathered hundreds of thousands of people probably all over San Diego glued to their TV last night. As for the team returning back, they're flying home today should land around 2 30 PM. They're going to be back on campus around 3 15 and I'm sure there's going to be a very, very warm welcome waiting for them as those boys roll up in that bus, just showing how much love and support they still have for this team as they return here in San Diego. And of course, check back on Sevilla State uh, at later editions of our news broadcast and we'll bring you the latest. I'm Dana Marie McNichol coming to you live from San Diego State.